Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack here, and I'm here on Disneyland on a Tuesday for what I hope will be rope drop, but I don't think I'll make it. I'm actually in the parking lot right now. It's uh, 7.49 a.m. Uh, parks open at 8 a.m. today. So hoping to get here early, uh, maybe go on Gardens of the Galaxy finally, because um, I'm actually here alone today. <laughs> uh, my, my wife's at work, and then uh, the baby is with grandma for today. Um, uh, and I'm just here alone at Disneyland and this is actually gonna be my first day at Disneyland alone so we'll see how it turns out and hopefully um, I can give some good tips for going to Disneyland alone and you know just in general the I haven't really been able to give a lot of tips on rides and things because you know when you're with a baby you don't get to go on a lot of rides but you know now that I'm here alone let's uh, see if we can maximize our ride time and see how many rides I can ride before lunch all right here at the entrance to uh, Disney California Adventure I think I'm gonna try to go on a Gardens of the Galaxy today, and uh, I'm actually at, just at the entrance of the park. Uh, not too crowded yet. As you can see over there, uh, Oswald is out and about, hanging with the guests. And uh, let's see, what I want to do is walk through um, getting a max pass. So let's see uh, how easy it is to get a max pass. So let me uh, turn this uh, camera down to my phone. <coughs> Alright, so here I am in the Disneyland app. So let's go ahead and uh, just click on your icon, get fast pass. And it'll ask you uh, who's linked to your party. So today I'm here by myself, but you know, you can have other people in here and um, if you have a one day ticket, this is where you would be scanning the tickets too. So I'm just going to continue to purchase for myself. And yep, just continue. <laughs> Alright, so I skipped all the secret account stuff, so let's go ahead and, and now that I'm purchased, let's make a fast pass selection. Disney California Adventure. And keep in mind, you can only uh, buy this once you are actually in the park. It uses a GPS system. So you can't like say buy a fast pass when you're 20 miles away and you want to you know, book fast passes. So what I definitely want to do is see if Gardens of the Galaxy, it's already pretty busy. So the return time is 9.15, which is not too bad with a 30 minute standby wait. So let's go ahead and just do that and get a fast pass for Guardians of the Galaxy while we do other things. Confirm. Yep, and that was super simple. So very easy to use, and uh, whether it's worth 10 bucks or not, it depends on your goals. Like if your goal is to ride like all the rides, I think it's definitely worth it because you don't have to go to the different areas to actually book your fast passes. All right, heading towards the soaring right now, and it's just amazing how, in general, like empty all the streets are this early in the morning on a Tuesday. So soaring says uh, there should be a 10 minute wait. So let's see how bad it is. Shouldn't be that bad. And over here, we're at the entrance of Soaring. All right, so uh, we just got a Soaring. Uh, the new Soaring all over the world instead of Soaring out of California. Uh, overall, I think it was okay. It, I actually think uh, I like both of them, right? The original and the new one Soaring over the world for different reasons. Like this one definitely had a much bigger variety of scenes. Um, you know, all over the world, you get to see the Eiffel Tower, things like that. And also there, there were like way more smells, right? The Soaring over California only had like a, the pine scent, but um, I don't know, like, uh, even though the, the picture was much more um, vivid and clear, like, you could tell it was, like, you know, really HD quality, uh, the overall, the, the video just seemed, like, a little bit less cohesive because you're going over so many places. But, yeah, overall, I mean, they, they both had their good and bad points. So, hopefully we'll see a, a remastered Soaring Over California back at one point in the future. But, yeah, they're both great experiences and definitely worth doing. All right, so I just got out of uh, the Summer of Heroes showcase. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's a basically... Honestly, it's a 10 minute trailer for Marvel movies. <laughs> I've seen most of them already. Um, there, there are kind of cool special effects, right? Because uh, the theater is in such a way that um, they don't let you film inside, but there's uh, f like five tiny screens to the left and the right in addition to the main screen in the middle. So you do get some cool effects and they have lighting effects, um, wind effects, water effects, and um, some cool light, like lightning effects. But I'm not sure if it's actually worth your time. It's okay if you want to get some air conditioning because it's pretty much wide open. It's a good 10 minutes of air conditioning. But yeah, if you have nothing else to do, go ahead and try it out. But if you're, you have a full impact schedule, I'd say definitely skip this one. Alright, I'm uh, in line inside the, uh, the boiler room of the new Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. And uh, if nothing else, the theming is way better. The pre-show is way better. I know a lot of people love Tower of Terror, but uh, Disney definitely upped their game. Uh, I don't know if you like, essentially like the Marvel IP, or, uh, but you know, yeah, the, everything in here is just way cool. Like if you can see around me, like in the back of me, the lights. Um, they really, like, if you can actually see, I don't know if you can actually see, but, uh, let's see. The old Yeti from, uh, Matterhorn is right up there, so kind of cool. I don't know which 
Sherwin is, but his name is on this box. Oh, he is Groot. Alright, so I uh, just got outside of uh, Gardens of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. I actually, I like, overall, I definitely like the ride. Um, the, the one thing I will say is like, it felt actually a little bit slightly less cohesive. I, I know I said the same thing for like soaring over, um, soaring around the world, but you know, like the, the drops were pretty random, which I guess might be fun for like repeated rides. And I heard there's, the, you know, different scenes and different songs, which is cool. But, um, you know, the old Tower of Terror actually had like a, a single story. And so th this one was actually just kind of random. But uh, I think overall though, the energy was much higher. I think it's a much better ride in terms of thrill. Uh, I'm sure like the kids will love it way better. And like so the, the theming is like out of the park, or I mean, I guess the theming is in the park, but so they, they just knocked it out of the park with the theming. Uh, the pre-show had a great uh, animatronic of Rocket, and overall, yeah, like, definitely an improvement on the old ride. All right, so I'm headed over to a Toy Story Midway Mania right now, and the reason I'm doing that is like, one thing I discovered about the new Max Pass system is there are certain rides, like the minor rides, where there's a standby wait time of like 30 to 35 minutes, but the Fast Pass return time is within five minutes or instant and so if you're willing to forego um, skipping like the big rides like Gardens of the Galaxy what you can do is go on like all of the minor rides almost instantly you know even though they have 20 or 30 minute wait time so something to think about if you're planning your day at the park if you want to go uh, on the small rides first or like if you can go and get the big ride out of the way really early you can just use your max pass to book all the small rides instantly yeah you can see definitely see there's a huge standby line over there so this uh, fast pass system really works out for people who have max pass um, where i am right now is where the two lines are going up but you can actually see um actually there's just a huge influx of fast passers right now but yeah the standby line is crazy and uh you can see the inside line over here to the left that's uh, the fast pass line so yeah, Max Pass, if you're trying to do rides, it's definitely worth it. Uh, I'm That was okay. I didn't get the bear level, but... Alright, just got off the California screen, because again, uh, with the Max Pass, it was basically a walk-on. So I did um, Toy Story Midway Mania, Ma Mid uh, Midway Mania and uh, California Screaming basically walk on and they're right next to each other. So yeah, Max Pass has uh, been great so far. So what I'm going to do now is probably head over to uh, the actual Disneyland Park, uh, maybe get some food. I want to see if I can get a seat at uh, Riverbell Terrace because they recently uh, changed to a table service restaurant. So we'll see how that pans out. If not, you know, I can always grab a uh, corn dog or some fried chicken from Plaza Inn, which is always good. So yeah, I'll see you guys over at the other park. All right, yeah. just got off of uh, the Matterhorn bobsleds and man, if you have back problems, do not go on that ride. And uh, if you don't have back problems and you go on the ride, you will have back problems. Probably uh, the roughest ride at Disneyland that's possible. It's, uh, I noticed it's really the side to side movement. Like um, you get jostled and you hit the sides of the, the thing all the time. And I think that's a, is that a Google Maps camera? I think it is. So like, yeah, that's pretty random, but yeah. It's still, I think, a fun ride. Um, the updated animatronics are really nice, but yeah, definitely a rough ride and not for everyone. And actually, I think the, the smaller you are, the better the ride will be because you'll probably get thrown around a lot less, so. All right, so it looks like a Ribbon Bell Terrace actually books up pretty quickly. Um, the only reservation available is actually at like 1.40 and I tend to eat a little bit early, so I'm actually in downtown Disney. I'm at a Ruff Brennan's Jazz Kitchen. Now, um, this is one of the many restaurants in downtown Disney that are uh, eating options if you want to eat just outside of the park. Uh, this one's a little bit um, expensive, though for lunch it is much cheaper than dinner. And it's a pretty nice environment. It's some, um, you know, like Louisiana style food. So um, what I'm getting is the, the fried chicken. Yeah, I heard it's really good, so hopefully it's good. So I'll give you guys a little mini tour around of the inside seating. We've got some artwork on the walls. I'm actually at the edge right here. And they have a nice piano here. I assume uh, at night, that's when uh, this gets turned on. All right, and the fried chicken has arrived. So, pretty interesting dish. It's not just plain fried chicken, right? So you have um, the fried chicken on top. You got, I think, some parsley on there, and then you got a lot of mushrooms, and it's on top of a bed of grits. So, it looks pretty good. All right, so let's uh, try a bite of this fried chicken here. Mm. 
And that's actually pretty good, good fried chicken. It's a very crispy. It's a like it's like a thin chicken breast that's um, breaded. Uh, the breading has um, a perfect amount of spice. There's like a little bit of like southern style spices. So a little, little bit salty, but it's actually great. And uh, let's go ahead and eat it with a little bit of grits. Wow, that's very creamy and very rich. You get the taste of like butter, a taste of bacon, and like all overall the texture is great. So yeah, this food is uh, very delicious here. All right, some other stuff I noticed after taking a few bites. Uh, the grits actually also comes with a bunch of capers in it. And uh, these capers are actually not too uh, flavorful, but they actually do add a nice um, contrast in both texture and, you know, mouth. Like the, the vinegar, the, you know, the sour taste to the grits, so it's not just all rich. And um, the greens here are just um, like a it's like the balsamic vinegar flavored greens. They're also very good. By the way, if you've never been in downtown Disney, this is one of the biggest Starbucks I've ever seen. It's actually very nice inside. We've got a big old um, TV screen wall over here. And then uh, they actually have Clover machines. If you want to buy your own, they're only a couple thousand dollars. So yeah, if you're a Starbucks addict, uh, Disney has you covered. Alrighty, back home, and uh, I left pretty much right after lunch, um, you know, to avoid the traffic, because it is a weekday and there's always tons of traffic in uh, Orange County, especially going back to where I live. So, um, what I did learn today, uh, two main things, that one max pass is definitely worth it if you want to go on the rides. Um, and you know, $10 is kind of a bit much for an upcharge to your daily pass, but, I mean, it's just the reality of the situation, and max pass is almost like a front of the line pass sometimes right because for a lot of rides especially the smaller ones i experience walk-on times which has never ever happened in my past three years of going to disneyland and so um you know that is the new way of things but the the value in terms of time you save is definitely there so something to keep in mind and the other thing i learned is if you want to eat at any table service restaurant in disneyland uh, be sure to book early because even on the day of um, I, I tried to book some times and all the times were like at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So uh, if you want to book in the morning, you're already looking at, you know, the late lunch time. So uh, I think even for the less popular ones, book like a day before. And if you want to go to something like the Blue Bayou, you definitely have to book that um, the maximum days in advance, which I think is 60. But uh, I'm not... 100% sure about that. I'll, I'll probably put a you know a comment on the screen if I'm wrong. So yeah, another fun day at Disneyland, and um, thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments, please uh, comment below, and remember to hit the subscribe button to help me out. And until next time, this is Jack signing out.